Hi, I'm the Casual Spaceman and welcome to the first ever episode of Mission Control News. This is where I give you the who, what, why, where and when news, views and hopefully the odd interviews in the world of space exploration and space travel. I'll give you the lowdown on the key players like SpaceX, NASA, Blue Origin and many others. I'll also give you updates on the planned NASA mission to return to the moon by 2024 and whatever else comes along that's newsworthy. But above all, I'll keep it as simple as possible and geek free. So let's get into it. I think it would be remiss of me if I didn't make the very first episode of Mission Control News about NASA and the planned mission to take humans back to the moon by 2024, dubbed Project Artemis for some reason after the Greek god of hunting and animals. Yeah, I know. In December 2018, US President Donald Trump signed the so-called Space Policy Directive or SPD-1, as it is now commonly known which included the instruction for NASA to return American astronauts to the moon by 2024. Some three months later, Vice President Mike Pence boldly and confidently highlighted this directive at the fifth meeting of the National Space Council, while announcing the biggest budget since Apollo. Not only that, but also announced that NASA had at last developed a plan to achieve SPD-1 by the date set by President Trump. This created a buzz of excitement. It marked a significant change in deadlines for NASA, which had been targeting 2028 for its first human landings on the lunar surface, while Orion, NASA's deep space human crewed spacecraft, was playing a key role in those plans. There is a huge amount to be done as the plan to put men back on the moon is dependent upon the Lunar Gateway. Now, the Lunar Gateway is essentially a space station orbiting moon. So think ISS, but for the moon. According to NASA's website, they are planning to start building this gateway in the 2020s using the SLS or Space Launch System, although I suspect both SpaceX and probably Blue Origin will play a part in deploying modules to the gateway, and I'm certain they will play a part in taking humans to the gateway. Certainly private companies are playing a big role in the development, as NASA always do with most projects, and recently announced that Maxar Technologies has been selected to provide the power and propulsion element of the Lunar Gateway. Maxar Technologies is a Colorado-based space technology company that specializes in satellite, communications, Earth ob observation and radar technologies. Exciting as this return to the moon by 2024 announcement is to most of us, there does seem to be some doubt creeping in and it seems to revolve around the budget. NASA's administrators said that Project Artemis needs at least another 1.6 billion to, ach to achieve the directive. So far, it doesn't like this extra budget as, as of yet has been secured. Having said that, some are reporting that the extra 1.6 billion is very conservative and may not be enough. Not only that, there's been delays in development of space launch system and Orion. Can NASA meet the challenge of landing men on the moon again by 2024? Well, that remains to be seen and will probably become clear by the end of this year or sooner when or if the full budgets have been secured and NASA can iron out the issues with SLS and Orion and of course move forward quickly with the Lunar Gateway. In my opinion, 2024 might be ambitious, but as long as NASA can iron out all these delays and the US government are forthcoming with whatever extra money is needed, then I think it's achievable. Although there may be some doubts, I remain optimistic. If you remember, there were very many people that thought President Kennedy's challenge to land men on the moon by the end of the 1960s was overambitious, and they managed to actually achieve that goal. The difference between then and now is the knowledge and the te technology that we've gained since then. If the political will and the money is there to achieve it, then I think it will happen. But that's not something that you and I have control over. 
we're just going to have to wait and see. I was born on the year of the almost fateful Apollo 13 mission in 1970. But ever since I was five years old, I've always wanted to see men return to the moon and go to Mars. But if either or both of those things happen before I leave this Earth, well then, I'll die a happy man. Well, that's all from me from this episode of Mission Control News. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope you've found it informative. If you like the video, then please hit the like button below. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell icon because then you'll be notified when I upload more videos. Also, if you can comment below with anything you think I can do to improve Mission Control News or any subjects you want to be covered, then please comment below. I'll publish another Mission Control News the same time next week on Wednesday where we'll be talking about SpaceX and what they'll be doing. So that only leaves me to say thank you for watching and science is truth.